Hello there, gentles and ladymen. I am Ulan Gaming, and today we are announcing the next Sunbros Discord event uh, to be done now that the 2v2 tournament has finally concluded. And today we are going to announce the Treasure Hunter Tournament! thing shall we uh so this is a uh two player it's 1v1 tournaments and you are competing for treasures is the objective uh so the, the, you're gonna start the game and uh whenever the map runs out of treasures or 10 minutes passes whichever comes first the player with the most treasures is determined to be the winner so at the 10 minute mark you'll just resign look at the post game look at the treasure number if players have the same amount of treasures whoever cheats more total score from the treasures is determined to be the winner, meaning they've attained higher value treasures. This is to incentivize, of course, going after the tougher treasures, even if it's just a little bit. Now, uh, this is more so the event of a tie, how we calculate the score. A 50 resource treasure is worth 50 score, you know, very straightforward standard. Uh, this also applies to XP. XP is a resource. If you find a 75 XP treasure, it counts towards 75 of your score. Uh, score of a treasure reward unit can be checked by mousing over the portrait. So, for example, this hippo has a food cost of 300 food, so it's worth 300 score. Upgrade treasures, such as explore hit points, or cavalry train speed, or hit point, or settler hit points, or whatever, do not contribute any score in the event of a tie. They only contribute to the overall treasure count, which is the primary method of winning. Now, uh, for rules, players advance in the tournament with a bracket system. Matches are best two out of three, and it's single elimination with no loser's bracket at all. Uh, now, the map is always random, with the map pool sets to all maps. This is the element of chaos in the tournaments. Uh, and it's more so just for the entertain. It's more so just for entertainment purposes for the audience and for casters. Uh, you know, players could get Himalayas, or they could get Caribbean, or you could get Lost Eurasian Steps. It's really out there, you know. Uh, all maps, random. There we go. Uh, players start in the Commerce Age with medium resources. Now, this is one that we thought about for a little bit, and we decided to go for it because it'll help speed the game along, for one thing. Uh, and also, it'll make it so that everybody can train units immediately, and you won't be just immediately fucked in the event that your opponent picks Spain and therefore starts with a dog and can just train dogs in age one. Uh, it's to prevent that and provide more balance across the board. Uh, now, as for rules of engagement, there are a few of them. Attacking your opponent's buildings and base is not allowed except for trade posts and buildings that shoot you and are not in your opponent's town center radius. So that kind of determines what is your opponent's base. Is it's the, the town center radius that prevents you from building buildings. So if an opponent places an outpost and you can place a building next to the outpost, you can burn that outpost down, essentially. Uh, trade posts you can always burn, even if they're next to the town center. Uh, even if they're next to your enemy's town center. Uh, but that's it. Trade posts are the only thing that, uh, that goes for everything. Uh, so, yeah, th there it is. You can build outside your, uh, you can build outside your TC radius, but people can burn it down. Now, combat with your opponent is allowed, but only when contesting a treasure. After the treasure is fully claimed, no more shots may be exchanged until the next treasure. 
Uh, now we're going to be going over this a little bit more uh, because it is extremely important that both players maintain very careful control over their militaries in the event that they fight over a treasure. And that's part of the reason that we are starting everybody off with 1,000 resources so that there's not as much need to just spend so a, a ton of time building up your economy. Now, in the event a player wishes to retreat from a treasure, after commanding their units to, to, uh, to move away, they may indicate their intention to surrender the treasure with a ping or flare on the map. Now, they can only indicate this after they start moving away. You cannot ping and then take one more shot and then leave, because that sends mixed signals to your opponent, and at that point they would be fine just shooting you. Right? So you need if you need to retreat from the treasure, you command your units to move away, and then after you command your units to move away, that's when you ping to indicate that you are leaving. Now when a flare goes off indicating an intent to retreat, both players gotta stop shooting. You can, neither player can take any shots at the other until the next battle over a treasure. The retreating player may not return to the treasure that, the, that they uh, just retreated from for at least 15 seconds. They have to go to a different one or wait 15 seconds. And this is to kind of like really dig in, their he dig in the heels and say if you're retreating, you're giving this treasure to your opponents. In the event a player's explorer falls in battle, a minimum of 10 seconds must pass before they're allowed to ransom or revive their explorer through whatever means that the civilization does so. Native civilizations can dance immediately for their explorer, but they may not revive him any faster than 10 seconds. So, for example, in the case of Aztecs, when they have 10 warrior priests, they can recover their explorer in like 5 to 7 seconds. But with this, that's out. That, that, that's not no longer an option. They have to wait at least 10... They, they have to um, use... They have to take some of their warrior priests off of the community plaza, so that the, uh, the explorer takes at least 10 seconds to revive. Now, all civilizations are allowed, however, native civilizations may not convert treasure guardians. Uh, so th this is more just a balance thing that we thought of from the beginning, uh, and yeah, we'll see how that stacks up. Civilization selection rules follow identical to Civ selection rules in the previous tournament with one minor change. So, both players may pick a global ban at the start of the series that neither player can pick for the entire length of the series. Then, the first match is uh, both players coming in with blind selection, uh, Civ selection picks. And after the first game, the loser can pick any civilization they choose, which is the minor change from last tournament, uh, that, the winners, that the winner can no longer pick for their civilization. And then the winner has to pick their civilization first before the loser counters. Uh, now, as for scheduling, this tournament will be a lot stricter on scheduling than the previous tournament because that tournament dragged on for two and a half months because everybody dragged in their feet and refused to schedule. A lot of the times just because they were lazy. Uh, and in particular, this is a 1v1 tournament. The series have half as many players and each game is, there's going to be three games tops, and each game is no longer than 10 minutes. There is no reason that you can't schedule at some point to be free for 30 minutes, you know, uh, one, at, at the same time as your opponent at some point in the week. You know, there's no reason for it. Uh, so, you have from Monday to Sunday each week to play against your opponent in your bracket. And if you don't play on time, the admins will decide a winner and we'll do it based off of fault. So whoever is at fault for who, if, if the, you guys decide at a time and one of you showed up, the one who didn't loses, you know, stuff like that. It's very cut and dry. We're keeping this tournament moving along. We're not going to drag it. We're, we're not going to drag it by its feet like the previous tournaments. All right. Now, all rules are subject to change for balance purposes, but rules can only be changed at the end of every week when all players have finished their series. Uh, so this is to stop me from just seeing somebody do a crazy cool strat and being like, that's broken as fuck. Rule change, it's banned. Nobody can do it. Now, if it's legitimately broken, I have to wait until the end of the week after all the series are done, which means if somebody finds a broken strategy, Everybody has basically until the end of the week to abuse it as much as possible before it gets banned. <laughs> Alright, now, the prize. 
Whoever is left standing at the end of this gruesome tournament shall be rewarded for their hard work with the legendary and fabled title of Nicolas Cage, because he is a national treasure. Thank you guys very much for watching the video. I hope to see you guys in the tournaments. Sign-ups go from now until next week. Uh, more details on specific dates and shit will be in the Discord uh, itself. Link is in the description. Link to the uh, Discord uh, server is in the description below. Uh, from there, you can follow the. Uh, you can go to the tournament tabs to figure out how to apply, and uh, that's also where the brackets and tournament chat will be. So if that interests you, we'll see you guys there. But until next time, I'm Ulan Gaming. Have a great day and goodbye. Thank you, gentles and ladymen, for watching the video. Please do consider subscribing or leaving a like or a comment. It really helps the channel grow uh, so I can do more of this stuff. Thanks again. Have a good day.